right. I believe we are live for our webinar today to talk about delivering the modern brand promise, a very near and dear topic to my heart as co-author of this paper. Excited for all that have joined us. And I'd like to introduce uh, my partner and our co uh, presenter here on the webinar. First, I'll go to Rick Watson and then we'll go to Joe Rosico. Rick? Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, my name is Rick Watson. I'm CEO and founder of RMW Commerce uh, Consulting. And uh, was happy to work with you on this white paper that was commissioned by Pipe 17. And um, really, the challenge that we're talking about today is how do we help brands compete in this new world? And so I think Joe will be a great uh, sort of sparring partner for us as we, he, he has been on his journey. And so I, I'm happy to have Joe as the co-CEO of Aterian Inc. Uh, introduce himself as well. Thank you, Rick. <clears throat> and thank you, Nick. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, um, I actually just read a book uh, called Sparring Partners. So it's funny that you mentioned that. There you go. Um, just yeah. wait. Just wait. You haven't been with both of us yet, so go ahead. Um, yeah, we have to decide or like uh, who's uh, Mike Tyson and uh, who's uh, <laughs> right. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I am the co-CEO of Tyrion. Um, I work on revenue and strategy primarily. Some other things. Uh, my my co-CEO um, uh, already, um, you know, works on tech and operations. Um, Tyrion, we are a public company. We trade on the Nasdaq. Um, we uh, we own and operate a number of different brands. Um, uh, in a number of different categories, home and kitchen appliance, uh, health and wellness. If you know Squatty Potty, uh, you know, for those of you that uh, take their pooping seriously. Um, Who doesn't know Squatty Potty? You know, that's how I Not feel. You know Squatty Potty. Got to plug it, it. got to plug it, got to plug it. Um, we have home appliances. We have iron-on transfer paper. Uh, we have... Um, um, uh, a steam related appliance business, and then we have an uh, essential oils business. So um, we've got a number of different brands in a number of different categories, um, a large number of SKUs. We operate a number of different marketplaces. I want to apologize in advance for any sirens. Um, I'm very sorry about that. But um, that's us in a nutshell. We've been around for a while. Incredibly excited. You know, we, um, we, we deeply believe in uh, the topic that we're going to talk about today. And we think about it a lot. So thank you again. Awesome. No, I, I really appreciate uh, that and and the background and, and how you guys divide it up as co-CEOs. Um, you know, clearly, you know, consumer has been on a roller coaster the last few mm -hmm. years. And I'm sure that concerns you as it should pretty much <laughs> any business owner um would love to hear kind of like outside of the sirens in the background what what Sorry. keeps you up at night uh, yeah yeah um yeah so uh very important um very important to get uh seven to eight hours of rest uh for those of you listening <laughs> very important so um so i try to do that but there are things that do um quote unquote keep me up at night um and for me and for our team you know the dynamic and ever-changing consumer sort of um, uh, journey, shopping journey, is something that we think about a lot. We're thinking about it every day. Um, it's extremely dynamic, the way consumers, um, their habits, what they do, um, their access technology, um, how they think about uh, how they think about shopping, where they think about shopping. It's, I don't think it's, I think it's been the most dynamic that it's ever been, and it continues to be that way. And so we think a lot about that and you know what we what we've realized and I, I know we'll probably talk a little bit about this more is that um you really and it's really back to the basics you really have to be in touch with that with that dynamic sort of um consumer landscape right that's that's the thing are we are we doing the right thing there and i think there was a time when when brands were thinking about one channel you know for example even for us we you know, once upon a time uh, before I was the CEO, a uh, co-CEO, you know, we thought about, well, should we be D to C? Should we be, you know, marketplace driven? And people really debated that. And I think we now know that that's not quite, that's not quite accurate. Right. And so um, that's the, that's the big thing that, um, 
you know, we think about a lot uh, at Ethereum, among many other things, um, but that's the big one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, just to add that, and luckily for me, as no longer an operator, having joined Rick um, at RMW Commerce, you know, it's something we help people think through mm. is, you know, the, the inflection point we as an industry went through um, in the pandemic when sort of everything went upside down and channels exploded yeah. and all of a sudden everybody was shopping everywhere all at once and the barriers to entry kind of broke down a bit and we saw this really amazing very fast proliferation of commerce and i think um you know if, if you make that one slide i think you just had up there a little bit bigger i think it sort of is from the you know and we're going to show some excerpts from the paper as we go through but you sort of have this, you know, what keeps people up at night is inventory and their ability to convert it to cash quickly to buy the right amount of it and to effectively you know, deliver this new modern brand promise that we're going to talk about throughout mm -hmm. this uh, call is, is sort of what we're helping people think through, which is, you know, you have all these channels, you have this inventory, you need to sort of get the inventory and sell the inventory and do so in a way that's efficient and that allows for your business to sort of be efficient, which is something we'll probably also talk about as both of us independent of one another. I found interesting, Rick mm -hmm. called it the era of efficiency that we've entered. And so I guess what's not necessarily keeping me up at night, except by association, because so invested in all the people we work with is like, how do we effectively connect with customers manage inventory and come up with a new set of KPIs and, you know, this new way of operating to effectively not just survive, but thrive, which is an increasingly, it's an increasingly present challenge in commerce driven businesses that own inventory. Yeah. And be, I think being in, in started from this, um, being, um, very efficient with cash. Uh, and in particular inventory, which too much inventory can kill you, is uh, I think super important. So I would echo that. Um, let's start with usually where it starts from, which is like, if you're a brand, the journey begins at, look, if you're a brand, it always has, it's a growth story. It always has to be a growth story. And growth story is about usually new channels. Like I'm on channel A, I need to go in channel B, C, D, or I'm on three channels, I want to go to my fourth channel. So talk to me about the channels that your brands are currently using today and how that journey has been. Sure, sure. Um, so 100% agree with you, right? So we're on, um, we're on Amazon in the US. Uh, we're, you know, we're in Canada, we're in the UK, we're on Walmart, um, we're on Mercado Libre, we're on TikTok. Uh, we've got our own Shopify accounts. And then, you know, we for, for, for those of you that are listening that, that have their own, uh, we, we do our own seller for the prime on Amazon. Um, we have multiple seller accounts on Amazon that, you know, for, you know, we operate one account per brand. Um, you know, we have, um, you know, we have eBay, we have, uh, you know, uh, we have a corporate gifting, uh, sort of a channel that we, we sell through again. Um, so we've got a wide number of, um, of channels that we, uh, that we sell through. Wow, but you're ahead of a lot of people, and I think it's a really good. I'm funny. I always feel like I'm behind Nick, but thank you for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it's interesting though, Joe, because um, again, you know, thinking about, and we, I'd be curious to hear sort of a little bit about your inventory management relative to your mm -hmm. channel distribution, and kind of like this, this, you know, the opening of the paper was like the mandate for order operations, right? Which was wow. this term mm -hmm. that seemed like super simple but like super apt right it's like what do you call this and it's like oh wait it's order operations and i think it has to do with this evolving consumer who has you know visual search who has yes. options who largely i think it's like you know 50 plus percent in store are mm -hmm. purchasing online and 70 plus percent are shopping online and so it becomes like this whole but how do i do it right and that was what we sort of began to think about it's like the Bonner brand promise talks about expectations. The expectations have evolved. And as a former marketer operator, 
strategist now, it was always like this, you know, two things I remember very distinctly, right? One is like one-to-one. -one. We would go to like email or communications, like one-to-all. And then it became like one-to-many and everyone's aspiration was like one-to-one. -one. And, and the other piece was like, let's meet them where they are, right? Which like sounded very good, but I feel like now it's reality. And so all these different channels allow them to experience you on TikTok, like you talked about, or on Amazon. And if everyone out there is blessed to be SFP, Seller Film Prime, Joe, very impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can do that, do that. But but I think we start thinking about, okay, well, okay, great. So now you have to be in all these places. You have an inventory or you have multiple inventories in different places. How do you like begin to maximize and is again, a former operator. It's like, oh, well, we think a lot about gross profit. We think a lot about these traditional metrics. And Rick and I were like, wait, like, it's not about profit any longer or growth at all costs, which used to be it's like grow, grow, grow. And I was like, wait, Facebook is going to be profitable? Okay, we're going to be profitable because that's what the capital markets are dictating. Now it's about cash, free cash flow, and ultimately like Gemroy. And so I think it is like a lot about what you just said, which is everyone has this aspiration to be in all these places, but guess what? Like it isn't as easy as like, I'm going to disconnect some cables and I'm going to plug in some cables or I'm going to add some cables. And like, that was a big part of this, which is like, Hey, everybody listening, you need to be in every channel you can be in. Everybody listening, you need to figure out how to do it because your customer expects you to do it. And a lot of what we're going to delve into today is like kind of effectively order operations, what it means in the journey, what the customer means to you and your valuation and how you effectively leverage yeah. evaluation of customer to maximize inventory to be the best brand and and player in the space you can be. Yeah. All right, yeah, Rick, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna, yeah. Rick knows I get very passionate when we start talking about love, love this it. topic. Love so uh, every time we're in a presentation, you could just like pick up the slack like at yeah. the moment. <laughs> no, it's, look, it's, it's important. And I, I'm gonna put something on my screen and hide, my, hide myself for a minute. Um, feel like the voice of God here. Consumers <laughs> visiting a lot of channels and as you're adding channels though, you're adding complexity to your business. And I know that you've been on a journey from, and I, I think you're not unique among, call it the brand hold co or aggregator model, building tech first and then deciding like, maybe building all of our own tech wasn't, the best plan going forward. So talk a little bit about that journey and how well, like, sure. you started managing multiple channels and not how yeah, like, yeah. the realizations you came to. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So thank you for that. And and Nick, you said a lot of really interesting things. So um, um, I think for us, right, the way we were kind of thinking about the, 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 the problem is, um, and I'm just using a hypothetical here, you know, we think Look, every day uh, we sell a great, I'm a plug for a product. We have a, a brand, it's called Home Labs. Um, I think we have the best selling dehumidifier. It's a large product. We, we do sell it for Phil Prime there. Um, and every day I'm making this up, 100 people in the United States, whether they know it or not, they're going to buy a lot, uh, you know, like a 50 pint, a large dehumidifier, mm. right? And we don't know at Ethereum, we don't know that we're going to get the hundred sales, but we want to know as much as it makes sense that we had a good shot at mm -hmm. getting those folks to see our so home labs dehumidifier. And, and so you're starting with the, where do they start their search question? Right. And we're trying to touch all those touch points. And I think you touch, you, you talk about that a little bit on your, in your, in your, your excellent white paper. And so we're trying to ping them and then where do they buy? Right. And, you know, we're, um, you know, like we want to make sure that we're there. Right. Again, it's aspirational. So we want to know we had a good shot, but then, and this is why we're here, right. This modern <laughs> promise, right. It's like, you did all this work, great job, right. Revenue, our, our revenue team. Now, like now we have to continue the promise. They clicked by, right. And how do we make sure that that experience, because you can lose them anywhere along the way, right? We're trying to do this for the long term. How do we make sure that that experience is, is powerful? They're getting their, everybody knows they want their product, you know, almost like within 24 hours, they want to know that it's been shipped, right? And how do you make sure that 
that's happening seamlessly, right? And then on top of it, and I think Nick, you were touching on this and or maybe Rick, this is where you're running your, this is where businesses win and lose, right? right. Is that order going yeah. to the right, uh, you know, it's going to the right place, right? To the right warehouse. And, and are we getting the right data to make intelligent inventory decisions, right? Et cetera. I, I would love to ask you this question, Joe. Like, why, why does it seem so simple to manage multiple channels? And then when you get into it, it's always seems like the operational issues pile up. Like what, what is it about it that like, brands underestimate uh everything is hard there's a lot of <laughs> everything is hard i've learned this lesson so many times um everything is hard there's a lot of um there's a lot of moving pieces um you know you just don't you just don't light up like hey i opened up an account on walmart.com or amazon canada and like you're all good it just doesn't work that way, right? Um, you've got to, you know, there's so many things that go into it. And, you know, we have, you know, people that, you know, are very in tune to it, right? And so for us, you know, we've decided what we think about, we're a lean team. We think about, you know, where are we going to be very good? Where is our best use of time? And so we just know that there's a lot of work that goes into order operations and again you just it gets multiplied you're in one channel another channel another channel another yeah. channel it just gets it gets exponentially hard and we don't it's not what our core competency is it's not who we are it's not where competitive advantage exists such a good point i mean i want to go back to where you said that i said a lot of interesting things i kind of felt like we should end the call there. <laughs> yeah. but but in all seriousness i mean you also just said a lot of interesting things just to reflect on and let's work backwards from it's not our core competency. And I remember when, and I think this goes to answer your question, Rick. Um, yeah. You know, when we used to operate retail stores, and um, the AC would break, it would always break on a day like this, right? It was just kind of getting warm, and and you you didn't have that core competency, and you'd you'd call someone, right? And and they'd go on the roof, and they'd come down in the deck. You need a little bit of Freon. It's going to be like two hundred bucks. You're like that's amazing. Or they'd come down and they say. You need a new compressor. It's going to be ten thousand dollars. Like <laughs> you didn't know, right? And like, but you knew you didn't know. I think as it relates here, right, and why we sort of thought about this problem, in 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 recognizing the transition from sort of like where we were and where we were prior, or maybe where we were and where we are and where we're going. It was right. like, hey, to your point, right, customers which I'm a firm believer that your business is the value of your customer database, right? If you're gonna measure your business, you're gonna measure the activity and the ability to acquire customers and keep customers, and that's it. And everything else is a byproduct of that. And so people talk about the funnel, like, oh, well, the funnel, upper funnel, middle funnel, lower funnel, it's a very used term. Guess what? Like when a customer consummates that transaction, it's not over. It's actually, in my opinion, it's just beginning. Just and so, beginning. exactly, so to have, a solution that you're not building because guess what like this is a new world and i think we can discuss like why that's a challenge for organizations to sort of work their way through because oftentimes the people that are responsible for the implementation and standing this up are the and making it easier by getting a third party are the people whose teams are the people responsible for doing that and that's an interesting sort of dynamic that would be interesting to discuss with you too which is like using an outside solution to simplify yeah, yeah. things maybe even make a teeny bit less margin on the front end, but have a very good partner on the back end and, and in continuing. But yeah, yeah I, I think that like there are no silver bullets, right? Yeah, like I, it's not like yeah. you just magically say like our aspiration is to be in 20 channels. We're going to be in 20 channels. It takes work yeah. and it takes time and commitment. And unless you're going to invest yourself in infrastructure to build it, or you're going to buy multiple solutions to execute it, you might want to think about like order operations and like how right. that's this new term that provides a solution or solutions that could solve it. Uh, totally, totally. And I think Rick, maybe this was something you, you asked about. So we, we used to historically, hmm. we, we invested heavily in our own, in our own technology of extremely, you know, we have an extremely strong CTO at Ethereum and, and, and so, we were making that investment and it was and sometimes that can be good news bad news right correct correct it was very expensive i think we lost a little bit 
of our our agility mm. um and 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 again a company that's got finite resources has to drive focus and so for us we realized look omni is very important we do need to invest in lighting up channels here um and we and order operations is paramount i, I nick i can't agree with you more that as much work as it goes into getting somebody to buy to say click i want it it really is to some extent just the beginning of the journey right um and so uh you know we we made the decision um look we're we've we've got to look we've got to look out we've got to look outside it's not it's not an area where we're going to be um driving competitive advantage and yeah again yeah and and we need the agility right um so oh we make sense and we've yeah. used this term a few times um so i think it it could make sense for us to kind of introduce this idea here sure. um, why don't why don't you take us through nick what <clears throat> we're trying to create this term for the space with our partners uh at pipe 17 who helped us commission the study and, and obviously that joe has has been using but there are a lot of solutions in the market for similar types of problems like where should inventory be placed how do you fulfill the right order to the right customer how do you make sure that your service doesn't drop but walk us through some of the major properties from your point of view i mean i felt in a lot of the conversations that we had in identifying kind of the the fit um i think it's it's sort of like this i don't want to call it a panacea but this, this ability to sort of take a very fast and to use uh, joe's word agile organization who needs a system to sort of take a central inventory or inventories from different places and almost like to again joe's point right it was like routing using logic right making good decisions you know having the bones in place that with the scale um you know with the scale of a business kind of being able to get into multiple channels right kind of manage that inventory and solve those problems for not selling something you don't have making sure you can kit and bundle and like package mm -hmm. as your business operators see fit and effectively like put you in many places that you need whether it's a marketplace you know a store um or integrate into you know the WMS or the ERP. And like there isn't, in my opinion at least, rather than this like custom solution, there wasn't a tool that was like, okay, we're gonna bring everything together. And the inventory is gonna be balanced. We're not gonna upset customers. We're gonna give them what they need. And we're gonna be able to distribute with as many, with a lot of connectors, by the way, which sort of solves some of that problem about technology and put people in, you know, an ability to sort of like be in a place where they're meeting their customer where they are with like as few errors as possible with the ability to deliver things and get them out the door quickly and giving an organization full visibility into like it's almost like think about mm. i'll add one thing right think about a person like me it's like sitting in a cockpit that's always what i when talking about that's how i had a vision right i'm like i'm at a i'm in a cockpit i, I work for joe and 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 i'm like literally i've got screen in front of me it's got all my information of where everything is going and the trains under tracks and joe can say to me is everything okay and i can go joe everything's okay whereas in a larger organization with like lots of different systems it's relying on an oms it's relying on you know the erp that has the merchant sitting in one place and everyone's and it's like i, I joe comes to me i'm like i don't know so that was like to me the these are operational activities but like it's the order that i'm sort of managing and so this whole notion of like order operations which is like the connectedness of the warehouse and distribution world to the distribution and channel world and like that kind of flat layer of equilibrium so that nothing's out of balance yeah yeah i feel like that was yeah. kind of confusing no but. we we've we've introduced this thought that you know there's this viral show on netflix called the three body problem which is a classic problem in physics but i, I feel like in any e commerce um it is, um, you know, the classic problem is in between your channels, which is where your customers are, your systems of record, which are all your kind of three-letter acronyms, your 
PIMs and your ERPs and your OMSs and things like that, and your inventory and your distribution, like where, yeah. where's your inventory and like really unifying those things, I think is, is a huge problem for a lot of brands because you might have a few point to point connectors. Um, and to solve that, people are coming up with lots of different solutions and maybe we can talk, we can kind of get into what those are right now. Um, now I thought maybe you'll, you can help us kick off this discussion, Nick, uh, kind of about that. Yeah. I get it. So I just, one thing I would add, um, yeah. just touch on is, you know, like, you know, we, we have, you know, we have our logistics network. Um, and again, we have a lot of channels and one of the really incredible things is that it's dynamic. Things change as my, as my CTO mm. is always quick to remind me things change at the, you know, in a channel or, or at a, at a W, you know, with a WMS system with a three PL and that can cause a lot of brain damage organizationally. And when you have a third party that can help you solve those problems quickly. They know how to do it. It's just incredibly, um, it's incredibly powerful, right? Um, to again, in line with the mission, right? Around sort of inventory management and the flow and, and making sure nothing breaks and also doesn't, and doesn't, you know, it doesn't blow up your organization, even if it doesn't quite break, right? So, but anyway, next, sorry, please. No, I mean, listen, you're, you're doing a great job and this is, you clearly get it. So I wish I taught you at the very beginning. Um, <laughs> but I do think it's a use case, right, that everyone should learn from, which is we're all trying to compete. Um, the world isn't getting easier, right? It's getting harder mm -hmm. and it's changing all the time. You know, we were chatting with someone the other day who was talking about you know, building a five-year plan, which is, in theory, it's great, right? It, it's sad. <laughs> it's not plausible because in six months from now, I can guarantee you one thing that it will be different than today. And it is evolving quickly. And so when thinking about the solution and kind of like what to look for, the, you know, the ability, and I think this is actually one of the better slides um, in the deck, but I do think that sort of when thinking about this order operations solution versus an OMS or a custom solution. You know, I think you're talking about the ability to sort of have optionality, right? To be either with a partner that will help you build connectors and, and work with you to take it outside of your building technologically to like pre-built connectors. And I think the benefit of being partnered with someone who is, is, is an expert is they're building connectors and they'll guess, guess what? When they build a connector, it's not like it's specific to that one person. It's a connector that gets built for others. And I think that you think about order routing and putting things geographically into the right place, because for example, right? If I have a DC in LA and New York, and maybe even in the Midwest, I wanna route my order to where it's least impactful to my bottom line and most efficient to ship. If I have to balance inventory, I want to use that logic. If I want to expedite something because of customer service, I, I want to be able to do that. And so I think that, you know, not to read up the slide, but like channels are critical. You need to be in as many of them as possible, not just for the ability to sell inventory. It's the ability to convert and get customers. And I think Joe said it earlier on where he's like, I know I'm going to sell a hundred or I'm going to attempt to be as high a percentage of the hundred dehumidifiers today as I can be. And I'm going to do that by not being reliant on my website or an additional channel. I'm going to rely on as many channels as possible. So I think that the ability to sort of have that capability is critical in your selection. Yeah. I think that management is critical too. I think people underestimate what it takes to operate some of these systems from a human resource perspective. Yeah, I think there are a couple of things that the slide points out and we can we can talk about them for a second. 
ultimately OMS is about understanding where to route inventory to a store and, and for Omni, but it's usually not a great fit if you are a digital most merchant um, and you're connecting between multiple marketplaces and your website. Um, a lot of those connections end up being custom. Uh, and not only do you have the problem that these connections become custom is that these channels are changing on their own. And so tick, whether it's TikTok shop or Amazon or eBay or any of these channels have their own roadmap agenda. Yeah. Um, plus big OMS costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to implement. And so you need something a lot more nimble. So I, I would love you to comment on that kind of distinction between some of the options that are out there to solve the same problem um, from your mind and how a merchant should think about that decision, Joe. Um, yeah, so we, um, yeah, I think. Um, um, Especially since you solved it on your, like, you yeah. quote unquote had it solved on your own, right? Yeah, yeah, we, we, um, we, we put together, um, you know, we had a cross functional team um you know that sort of you know like when you were thinking about i think nick maybe you're saying you've got a number of you have a number of different stakeholders here right uh right you know like you have erp related people inventory people revenue people um customer service related people etc right so um we you know we again for us we we looked at what we were doing internally and we decided it just simply didn't make sense anymore to invest in that again we're you know we're not we're not experts at building connectors. Um, and, and the team went out and we looked at, um, you know, we looked at uh, a, a number of different providers. And for us, where we landed was A, we need cost, we need attention, like real attention. Um, and we need somebody that really has the agility to sort of help us solve problems in real time. Mm. Uh, and, 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 um, and because again, I think, I, I, again, I think maybe Nick, you mentioned it, but it really is true that changes are happening quickly, right? And we just don't have the skill set um, to sort of address them, right? We, we need, you know, I need our tech people to be focused on how can we better analyze data and not um, worrying about the connectors and the plumbing, especially when it gets very dynamic. So um, again, it's agility, attention, execution, um, wide ranging sort of breadth and depth of like the channels and marketplaces we're in, um, forward thinkingness, mm. right. Um, you know, we, again, you know, look, a lot of people are very excited about TikTok. We are as well, right. It's important social commerce. It was going to take us a long time to do that, right. To, to, to light that up. We probably wouldn't have lit it up very well. And. You know, we were able to go to a firm like Pipe 17 who could plug in quickly and get it done far quickly than we could and, and you know, and, and ex just exceed expectations for us, which is, again, um, I'm on the revenue side, right. the strategy side. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I'm talking to the team like we need we need to have been on TikTok already. Right. You know, um, and testing and, and kind of uh, trying to understand social commerce and like why are, why is Squatty not there and on and on and on right so you know it just it just made sense to have a firm that that can really address the needs of smaller companies right that need that we need that attention sort of um, if that makes sense so. famous last words <laughs> there's a there's an API for that there's and an I API. Think that <laughs> I think there's an API for everything, right? I, I, I no, think right. that it it's only as good as your integration and the ability to sort of, you know, call that API and yeah. pass that data. And so is that really what you want to invest resources in? And the answer is unless it's a pretty specific use case. And I believe there are those cases. Um, the answer is probably no, especially in your situation, right? Where to your point, you want to focus on and allocate resources towards revenue and customer, which are sort of intertwined. Um, so I think that's when you look at the solution, right? And you sort of think about what is yeah. it and what is and, it that you want to stand for, right? It's like, what hill do you want to die on? 
you know, including, including by the way, like those, the, yeah, those operational things, right. You know, are we getting, are we getting our allocations, right? Um, are we, are we optimizing for last mile? And, you know, our teams are thinking a lot about that rather than thinking about the plumbing and fire drills, right. Trying hard to, uh, you know, it's like getting ourselves thinking about the right things. Um, so very, very fair. Uh, good, very good point. Nick. Yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of the talks here, the benefits you talked about, yeah. you know, really, you need to be on channels yesterday. That's obviously a, a big part of this. Um, the kind of, you know, some of the other things that I think Nick and you have highlighted, like the connectivity is, is built in out of the box. You know where your inventory is. Nick mentioned this sort of dashboard idea. Like, how do you get the idea that this is out of the box rather than just because there is an API doesn't mean you want to have to spin up a project to code to it, right? Co correct. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Nick. I, Sorry. No, I, I think that's right. Again, um, I think Shopify is a really great example of kind of better done than perfect. Shopify is a great tool. It won't do everything that you want because it's built to optimize for most. Similarly, do you want to invest in perfect? The answer is probably no. Right. And so in a world that's very fast moving and agile are you fast moving and agile if it requires that sort of analogy again of going up to the roof to assess what's going on and coming down and giving you an answer and then you having to think about the fit in your p l the human resources you have the capital you want to deploy the answers made for you no so i think that Anything that again, you know, API first, coding to it second. I think that organizations of tomorrow, and we see this with people, are international. They're um, a combination of inside-outside resources, and they're they're light, meaning they're they're moving fast. And I think that they want to be able to lean into opportunities on the front end of the bell curve, not chasing from behind because that's a terrible place to be. And so how you start, in my opinion, at least, um, is kind of how you finish. And so leaving yourself these open avenues to have the ability for the connectivity, the inventory management, which is a critical part of tomorrow as well as inventory does put many out of business and the ability to sort of be what's being judged, which is efficient, is critical. And the technology that you choose sort of sets the, the table, right? Everything else is kind of the meal. But if you don't have the silverware and the other things to eat with, like, wow. Right? We're going big, we're going all in. I, pulled, I mean, I pulled that one out. I don't know, maybe at like, uh, I, I got it. Maybe I got it worked it. and it worked. I mean, but I, I but that's true, right? Everything. Like bones, bones. You got to right. have the good bones. Like putting in an order operations solution gives you bones. Then you've got to grow into those bones. It's not like a panacea, but guess what? I think that's my second time at panacea this call. But yeah. it is that's truly true. giving you the opportunity to be successful. It's a, it's a game of incrementality. Yeah. Right. Like you need to be out there. Yeah. I think it's, um, I would just say like, you know, what I, the way I think about it is that infrastructure, like you, the foundation bones, right. It's just so important because when you're pursuing an omni strategy, which, you know, again, for, for all the brands, small, smaller brands out there, right. That aren't, you know, the, the big, big, big players, right. You know, if, if, if you're not getting on all the channels that are relevant, you're giving up that competitive landscape and you're fighting every day to win sales, right? Uh, in the world that we operate in. And, um, and if you're losing those sales, maybe it's a little bit here and there over time, 
you're going to lose, you're going to lose the, you know what I mean? Like you're going to lose the war, right? You're losing these battles. So right. you know, having that infrastructure that allows you to, you know, you really have to, you know, it's just so important to give you the, the shot at winning on the competitive landscape. So just have, have that again, the bones, as you say, Nick. And, no, it makes sense. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, look, uh, I, I think this is all great fodder for discussion and trying to ensure I, I find in software, look, there's, there's always so much software in the world, but software has to fit <clears throat> where you are as a brand. And the yeah. same pro problem that you can solve as a billion dollar company is not the same problem you solve as a $50 million company or a $5 million company. And so having a platform that can change quickly as you're a growing brand is very different than software, like, you know, as, as you get much larger. And so I think that's some of what uh, kind of our mystery guest here, I, I would love to introduce. Um, and he's actually the um, CEO and founder of Pipe17, uh, Mr. Mo Afshar. Welcome to the Hi, everybody. Podcast. Hey, Mo. Thank you, Nick. Hello, Mo. Rick, Nick, and Joe. Great yeah. to be here. Awesome. And I think, look, this whole enterprise that we're talking about here and the collaboration between RMW and Pipe17 really started on our, our walks uh, at NRF and Shop Talk. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Tradition to be repeated every year. Exactly. Um, why don't why don't we go back to founders like we we're lucky to have a founder on the call here and kind of when you were starting the company like it always starts with like pain right when yeah. you're founding something you like you have to there's something that itches and you want to scratch it like where did that start for you Mo? so um great question so um great also listening to you know you uh and nick during you know the various years so uh and thank you for for Joe as well for sharing his insights. So look, when um, you know, rolling back the clock, and I can't believe it's five years, but five years, um, you know, we were looking at the e-commerce space, and we asked ourselves one fundamental question, which is, who is unifying commerce up from an operational perspective? We said, who is out there to make it super simple for brands and service providers to unify operations and Having been in IT for many years like you guys, operations is hard. So we ask ourselves this fundamental question, who is out there to unify what's essentially an incredibly heterogeneous environment? Selling channels, marketplaces, you know, for people who have retail, point of sale, return systems, mm. EPLs, inventory systems, you know, data lakes, and the list goes on. And when we looked at this, we kind of really scratched our heads because we being technologists we saw this as being a fundamental problem around connecting systems up and then flowing data and you know having spent many years you know in our previous lives building software that connected and and flow data middleware we said this is a connectivity problem and an order flow problem it's not mm. just around an order flow problem and it was kind of that unique insight that led us to build something that essentially gives you both the capabilities of a connectivity platform and a lightweight, you know, order management platform in one. So, yeah, that's, I think that's fascinating. Nick, you, you had so, something? No, it's a, it's a, I mean, I think that, you know, when, when dealing with strategy, right, people sort of think about vision and strategy. And I think in your case, Mo, right, you identified a problem, which is a big problem. And then said like, okay, like, what is it? Got it. How are we going to do it? Which is, what we've talked about, which is, you know, I think that in this case, right, people aren't, people have the problem. They need to realize they have the problem and you've built a good solution um, that empowers people to be where they need to be. And, and more important, I think where they want to be with the things they don't even know yet. But I think it is interesting to Rick's point to see a founder think through like, okay, like we identified this problem there was white space and we built the solution to put it into market and see it succeed. It has to be a good feeling. I, I have to ask one question, like why pipe 17? Why not pipe 16? 
Why not Pipe 60? Well, um, <laughs> Pipe are obvious, obvious reasons we connect. Um, the 17 number is actually the, um, in the Bodman mapping of the human brain. Area 17 is the visual cortex that helps you to see. So not only do we help connect everything and flow the data, but we also help you figure out what's going on in your business, which actually is wow. one part we haven't talked about, but that's huge for our customers. That's amazing. Uh, so it, look, in terms of help, we're at the end of the yeah, day yeah. we're all, at the end of the day we're all e-commerce geeks right and so we're trying to predict what happened what happens next and so like i don't know i'm gonna start with joe if you had this sort of like what matters to you as you think about the future of commerce like if you put it as as simply as possible uh, i'll call on each of you yeah, yeah. Normally, I'd say um, you know follow the money, but it's you know just really basic. <laughs> follow, got to follow the consumer. If you're if you're following the consumer, I think you have a good shot at making the right decisions. So um, that's that's how I think about it, um, Rick. That's awesome, um, yeah. Mo. A um, couple of things. First of all. You know, I'm a firm believer that entertainment and commerce will merge. Mm. And I think you're seeing that with TikTok, mm. but you'll see that prevalent, whether you're on digital channels, whether you're on TV. So I think now is the time for this to happen. People have talked about this for a long time, but I think these two universes coming together is a tremendous opportunity. The second one is kind of AI powered experiences. I mean, you know, Amazon and Alexa. You know, it tried to be a thing for commerce, but I think now the technology exists for AI, not only to give us richer experiences through voice, but also if you think about apparel through AR and VR. And of course, in our world, we're incorporating AI into the operations side to really bring this kind of unified commerce experience together for the modern brand promise. No, that's awesome. Uh, we're gonna let uh, Nick go and then I'll close it out. So I think, uh, I mean, this is such a large question, so I'll try to be succinct. Um, I think it's about efficiency. I mean, I think it's about being in as many places as you can be. And I think it's about, you know, kind of to Mo's point, I've been saying for a while that what we do is sort of part media, part data, part commerce. And I think what AI has, has done, which I'm a firm believer in, is it's given us incrementality and improvement and it's allowed things to happen more efficiently. And so I think a lot of what we'll focus on and look out world uh, from RMW Commerce, as we learn a lot from delivering the modern brand promise and how effectively it's done is efficiency. I mean, I think that there's a lot about the market that's evolving, but one thing will probably remain the same, which is a change in KPIs and a change in thought around efficiency and free cash flow. Yeah. And so, Mr. Watson, I'll I'll turn it out to you last to wrap us up. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm going to riff on this efficiency idea because I think ultimately, once you're past product market fit, it's not about survival day to day. It's all about how you thrive, and it's almost like how efficiently you thrive depends on how much you understand really clearly what is your core competency? Where should, what wish you, would we be building uniquely? What do I wanna have, have consumed the 80% of my headspace every day? And what do I want to be the context? And so I think every brand owner, if they're not thinking about this, then they're every day they're falling behind because there's just been this such revolution in e-commerce software in the past 10 years that there are yeah. problems that are solved off the shelf that you could never have an like when we're all using like Magento and like all, all these platforms, SaaS has created a revolution in software. And I think that has made brands more efficient and allowed customers to be served more efficiently. And so I think thinking about this core problem is really what I wanted to leave everyone with and um really want to thank joe uh for for being on the call and um mo for for being our gracious gracious host and sponsor and and f and for nick for not only delivering on the modern brand promise but delivering on the modern white paper it's it was a pleasure thank you yeah it was really fun thank you mo um 
Thank you. Mike. Yeah, I think people need to read the paper and form their own opinions. We're not not a one size fits all, but I think it is worth thinking about. And Joe, I think you've been terrific in all your insights, and this has been a really terrific conversation. Thank so, you. Right. Awesome. A lot of fun. Thank you. Guys. All right. Thanks everyone for Thanks, tuning gentlemen. in. Take care. And Thanks, we will everyone. definitely be releasing recordings to YouTube and e email uh, those that have followed up just in case you happen to miss it. So uh, we'll be distributing all those things. So thanks again.